All right, welcome back. Today we're going to look at chemical reactions and the equations. This is how we represent changes that occur in matter. So to start, uh, a chemical reaction is going to be any time we have a chemical change where one or more different substances uh, become new identities, basically, what's going on. Uh, for a chemical reaction, you need to be able to also tell when one's occurring. And for our class, we use four pretty common indicators. These aren't um, the only way to indicate a chemical reaction, but these are uh, true very often. So uh, if you happen to see heat or light, the evolution of a gas, which you can detect by looking at bubbles in a solution, or you might be able to smell an odor that wasn't there beforehand. If we form a precipitate, which looks cloudy or chunky, or you can't see through it any longer, even if it's just a little bit cloudy, that would be a precipitate. Or if it's an unexpected color change, if you take a uh, white and red and make pink, that's not unexpected. But if you take white and red and get green, that would be an unexpected color change. So we might see uh, a fire, which would also show heat. Or perhaps we would see bubbles forming inside of a test tube or in a beaker. Of course, if you're boiling, you would expect to see bubbles. But if you're forming bubbles without adding heat, then that would be interesting. Uh, perhaps you'll see that solid in a test tube. Notice this also has a color change. This would be a precipitate, and oftentimes precipitates have colors. Um, and, and that's what we would expect to see for those chemical reactions. Now, we represent a chemical reaction using chemical equations, and these are going to show everything that's true about the reaction that we happen to know, the identities and the amounts of reactants. When we're talking about the reactants, we need to make sure that the reactants are correct. The formulas have to be drawn correctly, making sure that ionic formulas have charges that cancel and that uh, covalent formulas follow uh, whatever we would happen to know about the elements in those covalent formulas. And then, of course, diatomic molecules, which we in our class use Hunkelbrif, H-O-N-C-L-B-R-I and F, always come elementally as a pair. The chemical equations also need to show uh, the correct relative amounts, and we do that by uh, using coefficients and balancing our equations. This demonstrates the law of conservation of mass matter, making sure that the amount that goes in equals the amount that comes out. The type and number of each atom are the same on both sides of our chemical equation. So those are first two points of our chemical equations, and we can show you that then uh, in an example equation. So notice that in this example equation, we have reactants on the left and products on the right, and we can show this as words or as symbols. So um, ammonium dichromate, this is the chemical, equa or chemical formula for ammonium dichromate, turns into nitrogen plus chromium-3 oxide plus water. And then these formulas, we have a, a crisscross formula because ammonium ions are plus one and dichromate is uh, minus two, so we need to have this subscript two. Our elemental nitrogen comes as a pair, chromium-3 oxides, a crisscross formula, and then the formula for water. We're showing that this is a balanced chemical equation using uh, the coefficient four to make sure it's balanced. And um, also notice that we can include extra items such as the states of matter. So this would be a solid, a gas, a solid, and a gas in, in this chemical equation. So from a chemical equation, we can get an awful lot. Again, focusing on the, on the point that these need to be accurate formulas, and then we need to also balance our chemical equation. For word equations, which we just saw an example of, there are some key words that mean symbols. So if you can kind of uh, think about what some of those words and patterns mean, that makes you uh, more able to transfer words back into a symbolic version of that chemical equation. So reacts with is going to mean that there's a plus sign after whatever was um, mentioned before of this phrase. To produce means an arrow, or to form means an arrow, or to make means an arrow. And is going to be a plus sign. Decomposes into um, will be an arrow, and then is produced by. Now you have to be careful with how you how you um, write this because is produced means you're talking about a product, and that means that the chemicals that were to the left of is produced are going to be on the right hand side of your arrow. So make sure you put them on the right hand side of your arrow when you are writing down an equation that looks like that. Um, some additional symbols that we might happen to see um, in, in these chemical equations would be um, arrow for yields, reversible reactions. We can see uh, S for 
a solid or a down arrow if we form a solid we can see L for liquid um, AQ for aqueous means it's dissolved in water G or an up arrow for gas we would use the up arrow if we were to form a gas uh, arrow with a triangle on there means that heat has been applied and then uh, with a catalyst we could draw an arrow and then have catalyst above that arrow so that kind of got clipped right down here um, Catalysts aren't reactants or products in the chemical reaction, which is why we would draw them over the arrow because they're not chemicals that are actually changing in the chemical reaction overall. So notice that that's written over the arrow. We use aqueous a lot in many of our chemical reactions, so be familiar with this one. And then um, we use the yields arrow in every single reaction. So make sure that you understand that if we use the word yields, that's the same as kind of like equals or turns into. So then I'm going to show you some examples of how we can take some word equations and write them as chemical equations. On this sheet uh, I'm going to focus more on taking these chemical word equations and turning them into symbolic equations and extracting the information that's there. I'm not going to focus as much on making sure that my equations are balanced uh, at least right away. So we're going to start with uh, solid sodium. So I can get from solid that it's in the solid phase. Sodium is an element, reacts with, so reacts with means plus, chlorine gas. Now chlorine comes as a Hunkelbrief, and I also know that it's going to be a gas because it tells me it's gas. To produce means arrow, and then solid, of course, sodium chloride. Now NaCl, we have a plus one minus one ion, so that's a good formula. If I were to rewrite this, I would have NaCl, whoopsie, sodium, I'm sorry, solid, reacts with, so there's my plus, chlorine gas, T form, or to yield, the sodium chloride, NaCl, so that's a good formula, and that says it's solid. Now if I was gonna balance this, I would need to put a two right here to balance my chlorines, and I'd have to put a two in front of my sodium to balance my sodiums. In my second example problem, I have a solid, and it's telling me it's copper, reacts with, again that means plus, aqueous silver nitrate. So silver nitrate's AgNO3, it's a plus one minus one ion, so that's a good formula. Aq is for my aqueous, to produce, we know that means arrow, and then aqueous copper two nitrate. So now copper two nitrate, it's going to be a formula that looks something like this. Copper's plus two, nitrate's minus one. And we just learned it's aqueous, which means it's been dissolved in the solution, and means a uh, plus sign, and then solid silver, so Ag solid. If I put this all together, I get Cu plus AgNO3. Go back and hit my phases. That's solid silver, excuse me, solid copper and aqueous silver nitrate to produce, there's my arrow, CuNO3 sub 2, and that says that's aqueous, and then plus silver solid. To make this balance, because there's two nitrates, I need to put a 2 in front of the silver, I need to put a 2 in front of this silver, and then we're a balanced chemical equation. For my third example problem, it says in a blast furnace, so this is going to mean that there's heat involved, uh, I have solid, iron three oxide, so if it's iron three, it's plus three oxides minus two, so I would need to have Fe2O3, and means plus carbon monoxide, so that's a molecular formula, covalent formula, it's a gas, it says. React to form, solid iron, it's gonna be solid, and is the plus sign carbon dioxide, CO2, as a gas. So here I'm going to take my solid iron, Fe as a solid, plus my iron 3, excuse me, uh, let's see, oops, I misread that. I'm going to take my solid iron 3 oxide, I got ahead of myself, Fe2O3, which is a solid, plus carbon monoxide gas, which is G for gas, react to form, so there's my arrow, 
and then it says solid iron. and also carbon dioxide gas. Because it says in a blast furnace, that means that this is gonna run with heat, which we can use an arrow, or excuse me, a triangle that represents heat. And then to balance this, we would need to put a two in front of the iron. And now we have three and one. Um, if I multiply this to get it up to four oxygens, that's gonna make it two carbons, which would make this need to be a two, which won't work out. But if I put a three here, I get up to six oxygens. I need three carbons, and that gives me three and three oxygen, so that's balanced. So after watching this uh, video, I hope that you learned that chemical equations show all that's happening inside of a chemical reaction, and we need to follow the law of conservation of mass matter and show all our true facts. We can ID when a chemical equation is uh, occurring by using some of those indicators of a chemical reaction. And then chemical equations can be written in a word format or in a symbolic format. And that shows a lot of information like correct formulas, states of matter, and uh, what's reacting with what and what's producing uh, inside that chemical reaction. So I hope that helps.